Well, hello again, boys and girls. And here we are uh, standing in front of the, um, what some people call the aperture, some people call it the lay down body side ring, but in essence, what this is, is the outside of the uh, Tesla Y that we just tore apart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit today about the different aspects associated with how uh, these, these com big components are actually manufactured. In the case of this, in the case of the aperture here, this is one great big giant piece of steel. It goes into a press. Big chunks are stamped out. Usually you use those trunks in something else, some other, uh, some other part of the car. But this, this is what everybody sees. So consequently, we call this a class A surface. Class A surfaces are difficult to stamp. You have to have, you can't have any blemishes and there's lots of ways to make mistakes. The reason that it's called a class A surface is because this is for the customer look and paint only wants the absolute best stamping you can get it. So areas that are difficult are places like this area right here where you've got a myriad of different, uh, different angles and con uh, contours and whatnot. This uh, sometimes uh, breaks through. These are called bird beaks. They don't like those either. But at the end of the day, this piece is one gigantic stamping. And there's no tailor welded blank on here. Some people have used them in the past and I've been told uh, that uh, Toyota may want to do it in the future, but <clears throat> for right now, this is one big gigantic stamping. If we look here, we remember we talked about the shotgun and we said, this has got bolts going through. Well, what happened here is that those bolts holding that part on, you won't see any spot welds. There are no spot welds along this edge because there's no way to get the guns in. So this is held in only with bolts. Now you will notice in a second when I show you, you'll notice that there's a foam that's on the back of this. And that foam basically is there to prevent squeaks and rattles. The other thing that I should point out is that the, um, the distance between the weld spots, it's a little bigger than what we would normally expect to see. This one's about 120 millimeters that go between here. And, uh, and that is something that's, uh, that's unique and different. The one thing I forgot to mention was um, there's no metal gathering plate that goes over the top of this. It's straight, uh, straight to the sheet metal, which is a little bit different. So anyway, we've, uh, we've had a chance to talk at that a little bit. Let's have a look at the rest of the body. So I just mentioned that there was foam back here and you can see right here, there's the foam and these are the weld nuts right here that hold the, uh, that hold the components uh, from the outside of the car to the inside of the car, so the shotgun and other bracketry and whatnot. Over here, we're looking at <clears throat> the weld spots, and you gotta remember that this car is layered together, so you'll notice that these weld spots are going through uh, two thicknesses. These ones went through three th thicknesses, so that's called a T3, uh, a T3 weld. Um, and we've blown these out so that we could get it out, the, this steel here is called, uh, is called hot stamp and it's much, much harder than normal steel. So uh, you'll see too that it's a different color. So their welding spots are about 80 millimeters um, with going through the T3 and the T2 to hold it in place. And then we also have tailor welded blanks and you can see them right along here. You can see where they come together. This is a, a, a laser welded uh, kind of operation. And we have one here and we have one down here. And then we have uh, one over here. And we got fooled a little bit or I did because this blemish also looked like one, but really this is a stamp bruise. So let's move on over here. And this is um, unusual. Um, the, uh, normally your apertures are laser cut so that you get a nice accurate, uh, accurate surface there. But normally you don't see it on top of the uh, cutout here for the, for the roof uh, glass, but they did it here. Okay, so I mentioned that this is hot stamped and that's why it looks a little different. This is quite a bit uh, tougher than, uh, than normal steel. And we use a lot of this to save, basically save weight because 
this is in many cases much, much stronger than standard, uh, standard steel that we would use. So the part we're looking at right here is uh, part of the, uh, what we call the C aperture. And the C aperture basically goes from the C pillar to the center of the car. And if we have a look under here, you'll get a chance to see where the slip planes are. And the slip planes are there so that the build of the vehicle can be absolutely correct every time. So the way that they make sure that the right pieces are in the right spots are using what we call net holes here. These net holes tell where all those bits and pieces have to sit together. And when they push them together like that, they're going inside those net holes. And that will align this piece to that piece to the pieces that you can't see that are on the other side. So now we, let's, let's look at how you join this together. So let's have a look here at, uh, and again, there's a slip plane up here, but let's look at these little teeny tiny spot welds. These are uh, very, very close together. And the reason for that is because you want as much strength here as you can possibly get. This is for rollover, this is for rear end crash, this is size intrusion, all kinds of things happen. So you can see these are very tight, tight spot welds. These spot welds can carry you all down, but then we're transitioning from this uh, steel, hot stamp steel and mild steel on the other side, to aluminum. So where it looks golden, that's aluminum. And when you e-coat these products, aluminum turns a slightly different color than the, uh, than the steel does. So how do I make that work? Well, here, I have, these are called uh, self-piercing rivets. Um, there's a couple of companies that, uh, that manufacture them. One for sure is that, uh, that you talk about is Henrob. Henrob invented these things. And basically what they do is you punch them in from one side, they have a backup anvil, and then they spread. And it's like a, it looks like a tooth inside after you get all done. So for the aluminum to steel, and even for the aluminum to aluminum, you wind up with an adhesive. Uh, that's the purple and whitish looking things that you see. These are for a couple of reasons. One's for added strength. And the other one is to, uh, is to get rid of galvanic action. Aluminum doesn't really like many other materials. And so what happens is galvanic action is kind of like, um, uh, like rust. Dissimilar metals like aluminum and steel don't like each other. So you put this, uh, this type of an adhesive, that separates the two materials and keeps it strong and also keeps it from basically, uh, basically uh, um, uh, disintegrating, I should say. Some of the reasons for the, um, for the aluminum in the back end of the car is number one, I, I want the back end of the car lighter now because quite frankly, I don't have an engine in the front. So uh, for balance and whatnot, I need, I need the aluminum. I also want to have a scenario where uh, I've got uh, uh, global stiffness. So global stiffness means that the whole car is, is the same stiffness all the way around. So there's a lot of loads that are going to be coming into the back end of this car from the suspension system and whatnot, and that puts a lot of emphasis or a lot of effort into the C-ring. So what you don't want is any breathing. So if we look at the car kind of like this, I don't want that. Breathing is not good. And so this C-ring aperture that we were talking about a little while ago has to be uber strong. Because what we want to do is we want to have weight reduction and we want to have localized strength. And that's why you see this part right here. This part is for localized strength. Oops, it goes all the way to there. So this localized strength right here, again, is for crashworthiness, it's for stiffness, for the suspension system and giving you a better ride. At the end of the day, <clears throat> um, this is a pretty good body, uh, much, much better than what I saw in the, uh, the three. So uh, kudos to Tesla for creating a, creating a much better body. So uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's end it with the normal way here. Let's tip those cashiers and, uh, and everybody have a wonderful and safe day. Thank you all, bye.